How are you, Pete? Rich, I'm doing great. And, of course, it's uh, fan D action, Rich. Uh, ah, D action. okay. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's start that again, Pete. It's fan, fan, fan D action. Okay. And, what's, and what, yeah. is this, what is this site, Pete? Well, it's, it's, it's fantasy sports, and uh, we do different things on different days. Uh, when I say we, uh, you know, like today, um, I'm picking five uh, matchup, pitching matchups. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll, I'll deliver the match, matchups to Brian over in Michigan, and then he'll put them up, and people, uh, if they want to wagger, they can. If they don't want to wagger, they don't have to. And then tomorrow we'll pick uh, players with a pitcher. And it's a way for people just to uh, – Enjoy the game, watch the game on a nightly basis like I do, and uh, and go from there. But uh, you know we have <clears throat> we have so many different things that uh, DraftKings and FanDuel don't have. And well, of course, we have Peach Picks, and we have uh, the Pick Ten non-salary cap games, and Pick Five non-salary cap games. And, uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, uh, you know any salary cap with uh, better player value. That's what, that's what we give. Uh, uh, the fans and there's a lot of people who do fantasy sports and and uh, it's it's a way to get involved and watch uh, watch baseball uh, more closely and as you know mm-hmm. as you know the commissioner said that fantasy sports is not gambling so <laughs> you know I'm not allowed to do it because I'm a resident of Nevada but that's why I send my picks to Brian and then he handles the rest over there in uh, Michigan in I'm, Ohio I'm wondering Pete if in any of your conversations with uh with the commissioner, with Commissioner Manfred. Did you point out to him that, hey, some people consider DraftKings that baseball's part of, some people consider it gambling, so you never... No, I didn't, Rich, Rich, because, you know, uh, Commissioner Manfred, they know what they're doing. I'm not going to try to tell them what they can do or what they can't do. I mean, I I think it's wonderful if they think that, because uh, I have no problem being involved with fantasy sports. Uh, You know, I live in Las Vegas where... You're not allowed to do fantasy sports in Las Vegas, and and you're not allowed to do it in Texas. And uh, the law is about to change in New York, uh, but most of the cities or most of the states in this country allow fantasy sports. And, uh, you know, it must be a successful type business, or baseball, I don't think, would get in there and own 10% of it. Pete Rose joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, so Junior goes into the Hall of Fame. Pete, what was the first – what's your first memory of seeing – Ken Griffey Jr. When he's about one year old in the clubhouse. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I mean, yeah, well, you know, his dad hit behind me for like 11 or 12 years. And actually, I signed autographs with his dad a couple of days ago up there up there at the Safe at Home store, along with uh, Steve Garvey and Tony Perez and, and Andre Dawson. And uh, I enjoy going up there for Hall of Fame week. And I get out before the induction. Uh, I left yesterday morning about uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, to come back to uh, Las Vegas, and I was there Wednesday and Thursday. I went over to Rochester to throw out the first ball, Triple uh, Eight uh, game. Then I signed on Friday, and I signed on Saturday with Garvey and with Andre Dawson and Tony Perez and and Steve Garvey and 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 uh, Ken Griffey Sr. Ken Ken Griffey Sr. did pretty well with autographs uh, the last couple of days, mm-hmm. which you would expect because his son's going in the the Hall of Fame. I don't know if his son signed up there or not. He, See, Rich, what happens at the Hall of Fame, I don't know if you're aware of this, but anybody that's going into the Hall of Fame is not allowed to sign autographs until Monday. Is that right? Yeah, they're not allowed to sign autographs on Friday or Saturday or Sunday morning. They have to wait till the induction's over before they're allowed to participate in the autograph signings. Well, there's a lot of rules involved with Cooperstown, huh, Pete? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I know what <one> rule. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, you know they're pretty tight up there, and uh, yeah, uh, you know a lot of the players. Uh, uh, like Reggie signs. I mean, Reggie usually signs with me up there, and Johnny usually signs with me up there. They were across the street, but uh, there's a lot more guys signing autographs up there than you think. And I must tell you, Rich, uh, yesterday's uh, participants uh, drew a pretty good crowd. I mean, I couldn't believe. How many people come into my store and were from Long Island, were Piazza fans? Well, he had a lot of fans there, and so did the, there was a lot of people from Seattle there, too. There weren't that many from Cincinnati uh, for Griffey, but the Seattle fans come out of the woodwork. I mean, yeah. they really, they really like that kid. Well, yeah, I mean, he obviously meant so much to them. When did, when yeah. did you see that uh, that junior might have some ability on his own? Well, when the, during the father and son games. 
you know, when you had McRae's kid and you had Bourbon's kid and you had Perez's kid and you had my kid, the hardest game we had every year, Rich, was a father and son game. <laughs> I mean, and, and Junior always had just a sweet swing. But, you know, I must say one thing that uh, compared to my kid or Perez's kid, Griffey didn't bring his kid to the clubhouse as much as we did. Uh, you know, we but we brought our kids every night. It just seems like Junior, maybe he was away playing or something all the time, but he didn't come to the clubhouse uh, as much as the other kids uh, did. But you could always see he had a sweet stroke, and he was always kind of a big kid, and he always had a good arm, and he was always a quick, quick acting kid. You know what I mean by that? He just, he was, he was, uh, he just looked like an athlete. Pete Rose joining me here. Oh, sure, sure. Pete Rose joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let me talk to you about some of the things that are going on in Major League Baseball right now. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest stories over the weekend, I don't know if you, if it, if it cut through, if you will, in uh, in Cooperstown was Chris Sale slicing up uh, throwback jerseys that he didn't want to wear, and he got suspended by the team. Yeah. What, what was the biggest clubhouse meltdown you've ever witnessed, Pete? Well, well, I didn't have any like that. We didn't have anything like that. We were just happy to wear the uniform they put out. But these guys today, Rich, is so much different. I mean, you you watch the walk offs, and I never did quite figure out the walk off home runs that ripped the guy's jersey off. And and uh, I know the guy in the deep, the catcher for uh, uh, Kansas City. Every time they have a walk off, he's got to get rid of the Gatorade. He's got to get rid of the ice. He's got to get rid of the water, even if he had nothing to do with the walk off. And they just ripped the uniforms off these guys. I don't know what was Sale was thinking. I mean, I, I can't imagine. Uh, the White Sox asking a player to put a uniform on that would make it uncomfortable for you to pitch. I mean, uh, I, that's that's a new one on my on my part. I I just can't believe that 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 happened. And that guy's a really good pitcher. So, you know, what what do you do? You cost your team a game because you're not going to start it, and uh, it, it, you you you, card, you 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 cause animosity in the clubhouse. I mean, uh, what's the game coming to, Rich? Well, when you say that the uh, the players are are different today, uh, yeah. I, it, it, what do you what do you mean by that? I guess, Pete, do you think they're softer? You think that they they let more things bother them than you did back well, I don't, in the day? I don't think they're softer. There's some really good players out there today, but I can't imagine uh, Willie Mays hitting a walk off home run and coming across home plate, and Willie McCovey running out the home plate and ripping his shirt off. Uh, you know, you just I think it's a lot like spiking the football. I think when you do something that's significant in the game, uh, it's it's nice to celebrate. I like that. But just act like you did it before. And act like you'll do it again. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. And, 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 you know, I wasn't against Batista throwing the bat. The guy was happy. I see pitchers when they strike a guy out in a situation, you know, would do things on the mound. We don't ever say anything about that. So, you know, if you want to throw the bat, I just disagree with getting him in the seventh game of the series the next year, you know, because uh, baseball players will police the area themselves. And uh, you usually know if you've got something coming, if you're on the other dugout. And I don't think Batista would have uh, really said much at all if the next time they faced him, they knocked him on his ass. You... He probably expected it. <laughs> yeah. He probably expected it. So, uh, but then there again, when you do it and you don't expect it, you, you can get hurt. And when you're playing the seventh game of the series, the last that bat of the year, and then you do it, uh, it kind of caught him by surprise. Pete, what do you think of the All-Star game having home field advantage for the World Series on the line for the winner? I think it's worth something. I think it's worth something. See, the difference, Rich, uh, when I played, uh, and you had to be there to see a, a, a Warren Giles clubhouse meeting. That was our league president because we had no interleague play. So I'm sure if you had me on or Willie on or Hank on, or, uh, we would tell you that the National League is better. Or if you had Kalen on or your Skrimsky on, you know, guys like that, they say the American League is better because they played their whole careers in the American League. We played in the National League. So we played for league pride when we played the All-Star games. I know I was lucky enough to play in 17 of them. We won 16. The only one we lost was up in Detroit when Reggie hit that bomb off of uh, Doc Ellis. So, you know, we really took the game seriously. And it, wasn't, it wasn't for nothing more than league pride. Yeah, but there again, uh, Rich, when we played, you wanted that on your resume because we had one-year contracts. And if you go in and negotiate the next year's contract and you say you made the all-star team, that was a good uh, negotiating point, just like leading the league in hits was or batting, 
winning a bat title or a Cy Young or a Farmer of the Year or, you know, or a 200-hit season. I mean, you needed things to negotiate your next year's contract because my first 16 years in the league were one-year contracts. And so that's what you were thinking of when you're barreling down third third base? And... Well, I'm thinking about winning the game. The game was in Cincinnati. I had Leo DeRocher chasing me down there. <laughs> <laughs> Different and, and believe it or not, now you know this is the truth. Uh, I had Ray Fossey at my house the night before. I took him out to eat. But if you watch the replay, I started to slide, and he had the play blocked. And I would have probably broke both my collarbones. So I went over him. I tagged the play with my right hand. This is God's honest truth. I missed the next three games. He didn't miss any. And he went on to play nine more years. But yet the skeptics would say, I ruined his career. Yeah, and we're seeing a photograph right now that is DeRocher yelling at you as you are going into home plate. Just a different time. And it's interesting that the subject of time, Pete, is being brought up by the commissioner and pace of play, he's even considering an idea, or he said he would consider an idea, of limiting the number of pitching changes a manager can make in a game. What do you think of that idea, Pete Rose? I think all the rule changes are ridiculous, if you want to know the truth. Uh, why is everybody in such a hurry? It takes three and a half hours to play a football game. And I know you watch the NBA. How long does it take to play the last minute and a half of an NBA game? I mean, see, fans are fickle in this respect. If you go to a Met game tonight and the Mets, uh, the game's an hour and 50 minutes long and the Mets lose one to nothing, the fans are pissed on the way home. They come back tomorrow night and the Mets win 15 to 2 and the game took four hours. The Mets fans are happy on the way home. Why is everybody in such a hurry? I mean, uh, you, you can't limit uh, uh, the throws to first base. You can't limit the, an intentional walk just telling them to go to. I got a base hit on an intentional walk one time. So weird things happen in the game of baseball. You can't break up a double play now. You can't slide in the home plate. You can't pitch inside. I mean, I thought, you know, 1869, the guy that invented baseball did a pretty good job. Now every time someone gets hurt, uh, they want to blame it on something that we can change the rules on. I just don't believe in it. How much fancy you want it? Yeah, are they ever going to eliminate the commercials in between the half innings? <laughs> That's what's going to speed up the game, Rich. You know that, and I know that. They have six minutes of commercials every inning. That's 54 minutes of commercials. And they're sure in the hell not going to get rid of those commercials. Well, that's the cash, right, Pete? That's what uh, that's, that's it. you know that's what keeps that's the registers it. working. And uh, last one for you. As you know, Ichiro's uh, a couple hits away from 3,000. and. God bless. You know, there is a conversation that, that his uh, hits from Japan should be added to his domestic hits and would put him in the realm of you and your uh, all-time well, mark. What, what do you say well, to the stuff like that, Pete? Well, why don't you put my professional hits in there, too? And I got 4,683 of them. Yeah, I got one question for you, Rich. Maybe you can answer this because you're an astute baseball fan. Okay, Pete. When Ichiro got his 1,800 hit or around that 1,800 in the United States, how come no one said he had 3,000? It's a good question, Pete. That's a very good question. Personally, I have no idea where this is coming from. I think this might have been something that was dredged up on uh, on a network that likes to uh, have debates over topics that are created by producers in certain spots, well, to be honest. But but it is being discussed, so I, got, I figured I'd bring it up to you while I had you on the phone. Yeah, yeah. here's two things I'm going to tell you. I got 4,256 hits in the major leagues. And Ishiro was a Hall of Fame player, no question about it. I got a lot of respect for Ishiro. He tied one of my records, and that's 200 hits a season 10 times. Now, if you want to count my professional hits, and I believe professional hits are when you get paid to play the game of baseball, which I did two years in the minor leagues. I got 4,683 hits. Now, you can interpret those two statistics any way you'd like, and uh, I'm not going to get all those hits and have to defend myself or have to say something bad about Ishiro. I played in Japan, and they're great over there, okay? They're very fundamentally sound. But I don't think anybody listening to you and I talk right now will think that Japanese baseball is comparable to Major League Baseball. I am with you on that front, Pete. I am absolutely with you. Before I let you go, um, uh, my next guest in studio uh, is an all-time legend who happened to be a very young man calling your baseball games in Cincinnati and Al Michaels. Do you remember when Al was uh, covering your team, Pete? Al Michaels, he's the greatest. I mean, uh, you know, Al said in his book that him and I went to 
three different racetracks in one day. <laughs> <laughs> was that the right number? I don't know. I don't remember. Al was the greatest. I mean, Al still is. I love Al Michaels. I mean, he's such a professional. and He did all the sports in the right way, and he does great on football. And he did great with hockey. And I mean, Al Michaels is just a legend. And uh, we had him in Cincinnati. Unfortunately, ABC took him away from yeah. us. And we got over another Hall of Famer, Marty Brennan. That's so, right. You know, we've been very fortunate over there to have the greatest. Hey, Pete, Al, hi. He is the greatest. I will do that. Pete, thanks for the time. Um, good luck with Fan D action. Um, and and love to have you back on. Certainly when you're here in Los Anytime. Angeles. When Anytime, you're in Los Angeles. Because you know what the hell you're talking about. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate that. All right, buddy. Thanks. Have a good day. At Pete Rose underscore 14 on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.